Justin, uh, you're here with us. Uh, we've been doing some projects together on and off a little bit recently, and so tell us a little bit about who you are. Yeah, I'm Justin, uh, known locally as uh, East Bay Rippers. <laughs> um, I'm also teamed up as a committee member on the Bay Area Bike Project. Um, and so we've just been focusing mainly on content creation, and then now that's kind of turned over to me working with you guys. Awesome. Um, getting me on this bike and a bunch of other bikes, so. Cool, should be fun. Well, thanks for coming up here. We're up here in Nevada City. Uh, we're at the Parliament Trail Network uh, that was built by Bonk, a local trail group uh, that has done some really amazing work making this a really cool destination for mountain bikers. So let's get into it, huh? Let's get into the bike. This is the Trance X. Uh, this is a 150, 135 bike. It's got a 65 and a half to 66 ish degree head angle with a flip chip. We have broken down these bikes into five categories climbing, descending, handling, pedaling efficiency, and value. You have 100 points and you've been able to divvy them up and award the points to the different characteristics based on how you felt about the bike. Cool? Sounds great. All right, let's go. All right, so let's start with climbing. Uh, right out of the gate, you gave this a pretty high score, uh, one of your bigger scores for this bike in climbing it at a 25. So, Tell me about that. Why does it climb swell for a fairly long travel or at least mid travel trail bike? Yeah, I would equate the climbing performance just to the Maestro Link. It just, it pedals so well. There's almost no pedal bob at all. Um, when I'm pitching up steeper climbs, you know, I do like a challenging technical climb. It has basically given me no issues. Uh, out here in Nevada City, it climbs up really well. Uh, the tight switchbacks are no issue. Um, this is definitely a climber. I would say that if you're looking into climbing or doing big climbs, this is a bike to be considered. So even with a 150 fork um, and a 29 inch wheel kind of front end being maybe a little bit tall, didn't feel, you still felt good and getting up and over stuff or around steep uphill stuff? Yeah, the stack on this bike isn't that high. Yep. Uh, it definitely feels like you're more on top of the bike. Um, so it's easy to put power down over the mm -hmm. front or shift it to the rear while climbing. Yeah, cool. So let's talk about descending. Um, you didn't give it as high a score as climbing. Uh, it came in at a 12. Tell me kind of what your perspective was on that. Yeah, unfortunately I did have to take points off of descending for where this bike shines. Um, I do come from more of like an enduro background uh, and the reason why I got a 12 in descending was mainly just because of the way that this bike performs in the black trails. Right. Uh, I just felt like it would get hung up a little bit or if you were getting into a spicy rock garden, you really had to think about your line choice. Right. Uh, it wasn't as forgiving. Uh, with that being said, I do feel like this bike is at home on the blues and greens. Uh, and maybe you'll see some clips of me. Or, or me on the blacks, <laughs> but you on the blacks and this yeah. bike is probably not a good combo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm just used to having more travel. Um, yeah. So being on a trail bike, you know, I just felt like it was just a, a little bit of a hindrance just yeah. when things got chunky. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, I did have to rank it just a little bit because I think it does excel more in climbing yeah. and pedaling. So giant enduro guy says, this is not an enduro bike, sorry. It is not an enduro bike. Let's get this bike. guy a rein. It is, let's give me a rein, that would be great. It is not an enduro bike, it is very much a trail bike. Um, but yeah, still, it still descends extremely well. I yeah. just had to take some points off of another category. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, let's move on to handling. Uh, you also gave that a 12. Uh, and let's talk about handling, kind of up, down, flat, rolling, you know, all the different ways, in and out of corners and all that. So uh, what, what's up there? Yeah, overall, I felt like the bike handled well. Uh, it wasn't a standout performer. Uh, climbing and pedaling performance still really took the cake for me. It, it, it rides like a trail bike. It feels right. like a trail bike. When you need to lean it over, it leans over well. Uh, I just felt like maybe I was shifting my weight kind of back and forth. I didn't mm -hmm. necessarily feel like I was in that sweet spot mm -hmm. often. Um, so that's kind of why I took some points away from uh, the handling characteristics. Yep, okay, cool. Uh, so let's get to pedaling efficiency because this was your highest score and kind of where you thought the bike really stood out, it's pedaling efficiency. Yeah, I spoke about that earlier with the climbing. I just felt like this bike didn't bob at all. I don't have the suspension too inflated. I think I'm like just, you know, 10 to 20 pounds overweight. Mm -hmm. um, and it just felt like anytime I put power down, it was just right there lun uh, lunging forward. Uh, it almost at times felt like it wasn't a full suspension bike. Like the right. rear end was just really- So solid. Yeah, so solid. Yeah, very cool. Uh, so our last category, value. Uh, you gave this a pretty high score at 23. So kind of what stood out to you on the value side? Yeah, I really enjoyed the value of this build. Um, giant spec it with, you know, carbon frame, carbon wheels, carbon bars. I feel like at the price range that this bike is listed at, you don't often see carbon wheels spec mm -hmm. um, So I thought that was really tasteful. And the way in which they built it, it's, um, they leave the customer some options to change things that they would probably change anyways, mm -hmm. um, but highlight the key features that are, you know, the staple items. Right, yeah, they seem to know kind of where to, to boost, you know, the spec to get 
uh, a little bit more performance or to get a cooler bike at, at the price point. They kind of know where to where to spend the money. Yeah, and this was a, about a sixty-one hundred dollar bike. Yeah. Um, but the whole Transax line, you know, starts in the probably three or four grand range and and kind of goes on up. So kind of the upper side of the middle for this one. Um, so yeah, pretty high value. Yeah, with other bikes in this category, I would see with a similar build, you know, it could fetch eight, nine thousand dollars. Yeah, awesome. So it sounds like a fun, super cool bike, even if it's not at the level that you normally like to push it, but who would you say this bike is for? Yeah, I would say the Transex Advance could be for a first time mountain biker. Uh, I would really ask them where they plan on riding and mm -hmm. where they see their future of mountain biking. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as the price goes, it's gonna be easy to recommend a Transex Advance to somebody to, to start you know, for their first mountain bike. Um, or maybe somebody who was on a hardtail that's now upgrading mm -hmm. to mountain biking or to um, full suspension mountain biking. And the value of the Transex uh, definitely helps uh, mm -hmm. for those who are trying to transition over or maybe just getting into the sport for the first time. I, th I definitely think that they would be getting uh, the most bang for their buck on the trail aspect of things. Yeah. Cool. Well, if you are curious about the Transex or, or want to find out more, uh, you can come see us at any of our stores here in Northern California. Uh, or any of our stores in Denver, or just hit up our friends at mikespikes.com. Thanks for coming out, Justin. Thanks for having me, appreciate it, Matt.